Thank you, Mr. Speaker. To the bill. To the bill. Colleagues, Eric Erickson described a human phenomenon he called pseudo-speciation. It's a process whereby human beings divide themselves into various groupings that permit their members to consider themselves the only truly human species and then to treat others, especially some others, as less than human. It's a psychological device we use to make it easier to go to war, easier to oppress, and easier to tolerate having awful conditions imposed on others on our behalf. And the better we know each other, the less likely it is that we will do this to ourselves or to each other. Now, I'm fairly tuned into this, having grown up in the South in an era in which Jim Crow was refusing to give up without a fight. I remember the water fountains that were off limits to me and how that was enforced. And also the hospitals, off limits. I know exactly what it's like to fit the profile. But we live in a small world now. In fields like health, education, or any kind of commerce, we will do business with people who are different from us in appearance or background or heritage or language or cultural uh, expectations. On a very practical level, we are all in this together. And while it's true that we are all, in the same, all the same under the skin, it's also true that we are all different, both on the surface and on the inside. The road to understanding our commonality usually runs through getting to know and, on some level, love our differences. I have also had the experience of receiving a cancer diagnosis in a doctor's office, and I get how difficult it is to take all that in. After all, the language of medicine isn't that easy to understand, especially when it's being spoken about you. And I came into that conversation with a number of advantages compared to many other patients. But I come into contact every day with individuals whose cultural and or linguistic backgrounds make that communication that much harder. So much of medicine depends on communication and so much of communication depends on how we understand each other before the, the conversation begins. So while I originally approached this subject from an interest in social justice, and I wouldn't downplay that aspect because it's important, I've come to see it as a matter of practicality. The effectiveness of many expensive treatments depends on effective communication between providers and patients and their families. And many expensive treatments become necessary because of communication failures regarding simpler measures. So colleagues, in closing, I just have to say to anyone who really has a problem with this bill, we need to talk. In the meantime, I urge your aye vote. Thank you.